Hallelujah. Well, good morning once again, my dear brothers and sisters. Good morning, Father. Before we reflect together on today's gospel, I invite you to reflect with me on the COVID pandemic. Our Lord God is speaking to the entire world through this pandemic. The big question is, are we listening? Is the world listening? Is, is Belize listening? So think about it, think. In a relatively short period of time, much of the world, much of what the world worships has been canceled, at least temporarily. Perhaps the Lord is saying to us, if you want to adore athletes, you know, I'll close the stadiums and your sporting events. I, if you want to adore singers and musicians, I can, I can close the concert halls and discotheques. If you want to adore actors, I can close the movie theaters. If you want to adore money, I can shut down the casinos. If you don't want to spend time with your family, I can make it where you spend a lot of time with them by not, by, so you can't go to school and you got to spend time with your family. And if you don't want to go to church to worship me, I can also make it so you can't go to church. Thank God. At least your churches are back open. Now there are lots of things that are not right in our world. And perhaps God is permitting this terrible pandemic because he wants to make things right. So I've been asking the Lord, Lord, so what are you saying to us in this pandemic? And what I keep receiving in prayer is simply come to my mercy. Come to my mercy. In other words, God's mercy awaits our generation. And we can choose to turn our backs on God or we can choose to come close to God's merciful heart. So this pandemic is a, like a huge giant that we have to face together as a nation. Yet it is a battle that we could never win without God. This pandemic, I continue to believe, is a, is a call from God to the world to come to his mercy. Yes, his mercy is demonstrated in many ways, including doctors and nurses and medicines. But his primary means of his mercy is through his sacraments. The church, I believe, must lead Belize in a public events that we as a people can seek God's mercy on behalf of the entire nation. Now this pandemic has exemplified some, some great heroes. And in a special way, I want to honor and pray for one, of, one group of these heroes. And they are the healthcare workers, the doctors, the nurses, and the EMTs, and their support staff that are making great sacrifices to care for the sick. I've seen it with my own two eyes. It's beautiful. These modern-day heroes are an excellent example of what we call servant leadership. And, as, and servant leadership is precisely what Jesus is teaching us in today's gospel. So let's transition to the gospel now. Turn with me to this Sunday's gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 10, verse 35 to 45. Now, the lesson on servant leadership actually began when two of the apostles came up with a very ambitious plan to gain power and authority over the others. Mark chapter 10, verse 35 to 36. John and John, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. Wow. He replied, What do you wish me to do for you? So let's stop there, okay? Imagine if you could get Jesus to give you anything you ask for. I mean, what would you ask for? What would you ask him for? For salvation? For forgiveness? Or would you ask maybe for health? For love? For money? For power? A beautiful car? Check out what James and John asked for. Verse 37. They answered him, Grant that in your glory we may sit one at your right and the other at your left. So these guys wanted VIP seats to Jesus' glory. In other words, their ambition was to share in Jesus' power and authority. So clearly, James and John were not always saints, not in the beginning at least. In this gospel, they were ambitious, they were worldly, and they were selfish. And how did the other ten disciples react? Verse 41. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. To become indignant means to become angry, resentful. So, so, so you guys want to have power over us? 
So this had the potential of becoming a huge fight among the disciples. So Jesus called all of them to himself. Okay, guys, I need you to come over here. And he basically said this. In my kingdom, things are going to be very different. In my kingdom, whoever wishes to be the leader of all must first become the servant of all. So Jesus is teaching us about servant leadership. Today, the world encourages us to concentrate on comfort and possessions, on power and status. But our Lord is asking us to concentrate on service. This is a marked contrast with the world. In servant leadership, the goal of the leader is to serve. So the leader exists to serve the people. They lead by example. This is different from the traditional leadership, where the leader is focused on thriving their organization and the people are basically working to serve the leader. Jesus did not want us to be leaders by brute force or intimidation or manipulation or by other severe exercises of authority. Jesus wants us to be servant leaders, focused on the growth and well-being of the people and communities we serve. A servant leader does not accumulate power, but instead shares power and puts the needs of others first. So what is the virtue of service? Let me give you a simple definition. Please repeat after me. The virtue of service is... The virtue of service is... Placing myself... Placing myself... At the orders of someone. At the orders of someone. Pretty simple. A servant is at the orders of someone and is always available to serve, pro is proactive, is positive, takes the initiative, looks for solutions. You know, the success of a company many times depends on the equality of their service. And you know, also with the church, you are serving when you pick up the dishes after a meal. You are serving when you help someone cross the street or you open the door for them. You are serving when you accompany someone that feels lonely or is sick. Now, you are not serving when you do things reluctantly. Oh, no, here we go again. Or you are not serving when you disappear every time you have to help. And you are not serving when you neglect the chores at home. So reflect today upon how you lead others. Do you expect others to follow you or simply because you're the boss? Or do you lead others by humility and love? So commit yourself to be a servant leader, Jesus style. So Jesus said, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Verse 45, then Jesus said, for the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve. So Jesus came to serve us and he did it joyfully. I pray that you will discover the joy of serving God. You know, when I serve God, it, it brings me joy. Let me explain how service can also bring you joy. This is what I do in the mornings. Every morning, I offer my life to God and I renew my commitment to serve Him. So I begin each day focused more on serving and less on being served. So each new day becomes like an opportunity to work for heaven and to work also for you all. Because I'm here to serve you. Now, I'm still learning how not to see the people I meet as a burden or as an interruption, but to see them as a request made to me directly from the throne of God. So every time that you and I fulfill a request from God, it will bring us great joy. And every morning, so every morning, I invite you to offer your life to God and make a commitment to serve God. And then you will see every person you meet that day as a direct request from God. And when you fulfill a request from God, you will experience joy. Joy. Yet Jesus said, the Son of Man did not come to be served but to serve. And to give his life as a ransom for many. Question, what does Jesus mean by a ransom? Well, a ransom is when something of value is demanded in exchange for a person's life. A ransom is a terrible evil that places a monetary value on human life. For example, have you ever seen the movie Ruthless? It's a comedy with, with Danny DeVito, you know, that short little guy. 
And in that movie, they kidnapped his wife and they asked the husband to pay a ransom of like millions of dollars. And Danny DeVito basically said, that's too much money, you can keep her. And so they had to lower the price. And he kept saying it, they kept lowering it, lowering it, lowering it. After the while, the kidnappers said, you know, we're really lowering the price. And the wife felt offended that he wasn't willing to pay the ransom for her. You know? Well, our Lord Jesus didn't lower the price. Jesus gave his life as a ransom for you and for me. So today's first reading from the prophet Isaiah foretold powerfully how the Messiah would ransom us through his suffering. Isaiah chapter 57, verse 11. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Now, I personally hate suffering, yet I recognize that suffering on the part of the church, even today, is a sign of an authentic life in Christ. James and John didn't know what they were really asking Jesus. Because if you want to reign with Christ, you better be willing to suffer with Christ. Jesus served us by suffering for us. Now, if God permits us to suffer, it is always because he has a higher purpose. Perhaps this pandemic is also being permitted by God for a higher purpose. One day, a little boy was walking down a road with a birdcage and with several birds shivering inside the cage of fear. And a man with a good heart asked the boy where he got the birds. And the boy said, I trapped them. And then the man uh, uh, then asked, well, what are you going to do with these little birds? And the boy answered, I'm just going to play with them and have fun with them. And then the man said, but sooner or later, you're going to get tired of them. Then what are you going to do with them? And the boy responded, well, I have some cats at home and they like birds, so I'll just feed them to my cats. So the man made him an offer. Son, how much do you want for the birds? And the boy was surprised and said, Mister, you don't want these birds. These are just plain old field birds. They can't even sing. They're ugly. Just tell me how much you want, the man insisted. So the little boy thought about it and finally said, $10, $10. So the man reached into his pocket and handed the boy $10. Then the man took the cage, opened the door of the cage, and encouraged the little frightened little birds to fly away, and they flew away. That man paid a $10 ransom for those little birds. Well, once upon a time, it is said that Jesus and the devil engaged in a negotiation. And Satan boasted that he had trapped a whole world full of people. And Jesus asked them, well, what are you going to do with all these people in your cage? And the devil said, I'm going to play with them. I'll tease them, make them merry, and then cheat on each other, and use drugs, and fight and kill one another and steal from one another. I'm going to teach them how to throw bombs at one another. I'll send pandemics. I'll just have lots and lots of fun with them. And Jesus said, and, and when you get tired of playing, what, what are you going to do with them? And Satan said, I, I'm going to damn them. They're no good anyway. I'll just kill them. And then Jesus said, well, how much do you want for them? And Satan responded, I, you can't be serious. If I sell them to you, they'll just spit on you, they'll hate you, they'll, they'll hit you, they'll beat you, they'll, they'll hammer nails into you, man, they're no good, they're no good. But Jesus insisted, so how much, how much? Satan thought about it and then said, all of your tears and all of your blood, that's the price. And you know what? Jesus took the cage, he paid the price, and he opened the door. That is servant leadership. That is true leadership. My prayer for you is this. May you experience in your life the joy of servant leadership. May you renew each day your commitment to serve rather than being served. And may you realize that Jesus has already paid the price and opened the cage for you. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen.